Fussy. A rather strange name. A bit pretentious, a bit gangster, like Shizzle or Pulsy Fizza, all combined into one brand name. And when you realize that the brand is Chinese, all that rizzle nizzle melts like snow. But don't let this brand name fool you. Despite its pretenses, this Fossey is a very interesting gaming deck indeed. And here's why. Well, hello there and welcome back to another video here on Anton's Hardware. Okay, let's drop the fake gangster. I'm not gangster at all. And my daughter is giving me the oh my god that look while recording this. So let's move on. The Fossi K5 Pro. Now, as always, I did another review about the Fossi product in the past, which is way, way back. And well, I was pretty pleased with the product. The main issue that I had was that it wasn't for gamers because there's no mic input. Well, which is sort of essential if you're gaming with your mates. And the K5 does have one, so I was pretty pleased to get this product. So let's dive a bit deeper and see what the K5 looks like. But before we go there, I just wanted to show you the box. This is uh, over here. This is the box. Uh, nowhere on the box it indicates that the Fossi K5 Pro is inside. It's just in a generic box which says home audio expert. I thought that was pretty funny, but it doesn't matter. It's all about what's inside the box. On the front of the K5 Pro, you have a headphone output with a 3.5 mm jack. The 3.5 mm jack is also used for the mic input. There's a bass and treble control. There's a volume button that has several functions on, off, volume and mode select. There are also three light indicators to show you what input is used. On the back you have a USB-C which also serves as the power supply. This is also needed if you want to use one of the other inputs. And the other inputs are an optical in and a coax in. There are two RCA outputs for the left and the right channel. Now this isn't amplified so you need powered speakers when you want to use it. Overall, this is a pretty decent package. All the inputs and outputs that you may want as a gamer are there. Except for one thing. If you really, really needed an optical output. At the heart of the K5 Pro is the unknown SS1700B1. Now this is made by a company based in Taiwan and it is called 3S or Solid State Systems. It's been around since 1998 and according to their website they are well known for by its profound NAND flash knowledge and experience accumulated on mobile storage medias. It also focuses more on microphones and hearing aids for the hearing impaired. Okay, uh, besides that, the SS1700B1 is a combined USB headset and line-in controller, which has, well, as the name implies, a line-in, microphone-in, and a headphone interface and can be directly connected to microphones, headphones, amplifiers, music recording, playback on the USB port, VoIP, communication, and other applications. But it is capable of 24 bits and 96 kilohertz, for the digital to analog converter and 24 bits and 48 kilohertz for the analog to digital converter. And then you have the MS8416T made by Rui Meng, a company based in China that has been around since 2008. The MS8416T is used to convert the inputs from the coax and the digital line in to the SS1700B1. It's capable of 192 kilohertz. I can't tell the bit rate, but my educated guess that it's 24 bits. And then you have the problem child. Not that, that it's a bad component. No, it's just, I just couldn't find out what it was. Usually I just Google the component product name and voila, a data sheet appears for me to read. But not with this one, the product number didn't result in any useful hits. Normally the logo also helps me somewhat, but uh, I just didn't know what this one was. Even plowing through a database with logos didn't help. 
And then finally, on a French version of AliExpress, I found a cool clue to the company name. Forgive my pronunciations, but it's the Shenzhen Naxian Technology Corporate Limited. So what is this mystery component? Well, it's a digital to analog converter, a 120 decibels, I guess that's the, this is the signal to noise ratio, 192 kilohertz, a multi-bit digital to analog converter with volume control. And that's it. Um, when I want to download the datasheet, I bump into a password wall. I contacted Shenzhen Nexion Technology and they replied, but the datasheet then was in Chinese. Thank God there is the translate functionality, which always gives us very funny and interesting results. Like 107 decibels total harmonic distortion plus women. Now I know it's meant to say total harmonic distortion plus noise. So does this mean that Chinese women and women and noise are the same? Let's hope that the wife doesn't hear about this because sometimes I agree. Now the op amp used is the NE5532, which is a regular op amp. Nothing too fancy about this one, and I'm happy to see that the, an actual op amp is used. Now on paper, this makes the K5 Pro able to drive headsets up to 600 ohms. But I know from practice that you will need an additional power supply, as the power the USB delivers just isn't enough. So what else is on there? Well, two not too exciting components. You have an EEPROM in the form of the FT24CA8A, uh, which stores the firmware. The other is the HAF4053B, uh, which is a triple single pole double throw analog switch, which is a mouthful, but that's just the component that drives the volume knob uh, functionalities. And that's about it. That's all components covered. So what does this mean for right mark? Well, let's head over there. Sadly, right mark audio analyzer will give the K5 Pro only an average, something that well, I wasn't hoping for. The frequency response gets an average, with the main reason being that well, in the measurements, well, they don't line up in a perfect line. As a matter of fact, it's quite depressing with the bass being severely underpowered, the middles overpowered and the, well, the highs muddling around. The total harmonic distortion gets a very good with a total harmonic distortion of 0.0642%, which is very impressive. There's also one thing that I would like to point out and that is the stereo crosstalk, which gets an average. Now, this may not seem that good, but this is something that a lot of other devices fail to achieve. Despite the average that it got in Rydmark, I kinda enjoy the K5 Pro during gaming, because the lack of the bass is just what gamers want, so there wasn't really an issue there, as bass is only a distraction. The middles and highs are the things you want to hear. The K5 felt precise and it would drive different headsets and headphones with ease, even a 250 ohm biodynamic. The mic input was okay and as I say so often, my gaming mates aren't interested in the soft and intricate tones of my voice. They want to hear where the enemy is and want to hear me talk and communicate. Overall you can hear that the K5 Pro is made for mid gamers in mind. Music isn't something the K5 Pro is made for, or you need to tweak the bass and the treble knobs to get the frequency response a bit more flat. Despite that, it was kinda okay to listen to, and it seems that the precision that I heard while gaming translates into a wider sound stage. It sounds bright and airy and isn't a burden on your ears. Overall, it was a mixed experience while listening to music, and not something to be overly enthusiastic about. Okay, now before I get to my conclusion, I want to address that there at first seemed to be different versions of the K5 Pro around. One that was sent to the professional reviewers and the other one was that, well, that was put up for sale for us normal folk. The version that the reviewers got well, had the Max 97 220 op amp and a PCM 5100 digital to analog converter, both very impressive components, with the latter being able to use 32 bits and 384 kilohertz, a lot more than that the normal K5 Pro has to offer. 
Now, a lot of manufacturers from China tend to make a lot of versions with, of the same product with different components from whatever they have on the shelf and don't mention this at all. So I contacted one of the reviewers and, well, the guy sort of even admits to the possibility. And I was annoyed, so I contacted Fossi themselves. And they were also annoyed and kind of mad and wanted to know everything about it. There weren't different versions out there and I was com correct with the components used. Now the writer ended up changing the website but forgot to edit the German version on a forum so you can still see it there. But there's just one version and my components are correct. Now besides all that, this is a very well built digital to analog converter, analog to digital converter with an aluminium housing that feels very solid. I like the rubber feet that stops it from wobbling too much. It looks cool with the blue LED indicating what input is used. So the overall build quality and styling is very nice. For gaming the mic input is a welcome addition over the Fossi that I reviewed a very long time ago. I also like the K5 Pro a lot while gaming and I could hear the definite improvement especially with the precision. If you're into Tarkov you will love the sound that it produces. If you're into music, well then maybe you want to skip the K5 Pro and look for something else. Despite the sound stage being rather good, the total reproduction just isn't good enough and will start to annoy you. So, should I recommend this digital to analog converter, analog to digital converter? Well, on the positive side, it does improve your audio and adds functionality if you need it. On the other hand, the improvements aren't a leap forward. But then, it's just 80 euros, and at that price, the Fossi is a great product. So, yes, I can definitely recommend the Fossi K5 Pro. And with this ending, I would like to thank you for making it all the way to the end of this video. And I would like to see you in the next one. See you then. Bye-bye.